Hey, it's Mr. D, the band teacher, and today's mini lesson is going to be to prepare the song Minuet in G uh, for the clarinet. It's a level one solo. Um, in order to get the best out of this lesson, you're going to want to have your clarinet and your original copy of your music, the one you purchased at a music store, um, handy. So you may want to stop the video right now um, and get all that stuff set up uh, right by your computer. If you're ready to go, um, let's talk a little bit about this song first, and then we're going to do some playing. Let me show you a quick view, uh, some things I want you to keep in mind as you think about preparing this song. Okay, so here's the uh, JS Bach. Remember, you're using the Ronald Dissinger uh, edition, and it's minuet in G, uh, clarinet solo. A couple things to keep in mind is the repeat sign, and a video that I've done that uh, is a performance video. I didn't do the repeat signs, but if you were to perform this with a piano player or um, for a competition, you're going to want to uh, figure that out by asking the judge. Also, keep in mind the articulations. You have slurs and tonguing here. Okay? Um, you do cross over the break right here. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you also have that happen down on uh, section B here, right below it. Uh, note the dynamics right here, guys. Piano. You have a mezzo piano, you have a forte. These are all contrasting sections, and you want to bring those uh, dynamics into play so that the song is exciting uh, and interesting. It's not just one volume all the way through. And also important to note, there's a DSL fine at the end that tells you to go back to the beginning and end on the word fine right here on the end of line four. Okay, so let's get our instrument out and let's uh, work out some of these parts. The first section that I'm going to do is uh, measures one through four. And then we're going to talk about the last measure of line one. So here's measure uh, one through four where you start playing. Okay? So notice I'm, uh, the reason why I'm just playing this section is to show you that throughout the whole song there's slurring and crisp tonguing. Remember the tonguing is the dot uh, below the note. That's the crisp staccato. The line below the note is tenuto, which is to play the note for its full value. Uh, and the slurs, remember, you're not tonguing in between the curved line. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about that last measure on line one. It's the one where we cross over the break, where we go from a G and an A all the way to the B natural. Now the B natural, remember, is the same as the low E fingering. So before you even attempt this song, you want to make sure you know how to finger low E, uh, excuse me, uh, the B natural fingering, which is like low E, but with the register key, and the C fingering, whoops, the C fingering, which is um, like the low F fingering, but with the register key, okay? Once you can get those out consistently, which means to get them out every time, then we can work on our right hand trick to make that whole section smoother. What you're going to do is during this um, notes A or G, or B flat, but in this particular song, A or G, you're going to want to put the right hand down on the low F fingering. All right, so you're playing G with nothing in the left hand, but you're keeping the right hand down. So here's what that sounds like. You can do the same thing on A, keep the right hand down. And then when it's time to pop up over the break to the B natural, you're already halfway there. You got most of the fingering already done. You're just going to add your uh, left pinky and the register and the other fingers. So that, that would sound like this. I'm going to go G, A, B natural. You may want to stop the video to kind of work that out. A lot of kids don't like to do the right hand immediately because it's just something totally different. But thinking ahead now, further along, the right hand is a, a typical clarinet um, technique to help you cross over the break smoothly and that's what we want to have that transition from the A and the G to go over smoothly. All right, so let's try that last measure with me. Ready? Start on the A, go, and then F. Put your right hand down on the G and keep it down. B natural. Okay? All right, so let's do that one more time. Why don't you pause the video right now and kind of do that right now on your own a couple of times. You know, just do it slowly and work it out. 
When you're ready to go, we're now going to go to section B. Okay? So the beginning to the end of section A is pretty much a repeated section. It, um, it's that same melody, that uh, four measures that I played for you a minute ago, um, pretty much all the way through. So once you know uh, from the beginning of where you played is section A, you kind of pretty much know the A section as well. Now we're going to jump down to the B section. I'm, gonna, I'm going to ignore the dynamics for now because this is just specifically for technique. All right, um, just a couple things to note at the end of line B, the, B uh, the line with the B on it, there's F sharp, E, and then there's another F sharp. Even though it's not labeled, it's in the same measure. All right, so F sharp. The F sharp, remember, is like E, but without your thumb. Okay, and then the line below B is where we have to use that right hand um, trick again. So we'll do that first. It's the third line from the bottom on my edition. It goes right hand down, V natural. So the right hand stays down, the right hand stays down on those three fingers until you hit the D, all right, which would be the D quarter note um, second measure from the end of that line. So we're looking at the third line from the bottom. When you hit that, um, the second D quarter note, that's when you lift your right hand up. Let's do that pattern again slowly, ready? The third line from the bottom, ready, breathe in, and go. One more time. Okay, so stop the video and figure that out. If you think you can play it, let's do it one more time. Remember, you're using the pause button on your video to stop this video right now to go over the parts that I just played. Okay? Now, section C, piece of cake. Don't worry about that. You don't have any to worry about crossing over the break at all. It's pretty much straightforward. So let's do section B to C right now. Don't forget those F sharps. Continue. I was lucky that time. I didn't put down the right hand. I just, for some reason, forgot. Um, let's do that line again, but I will put the right hand down on the G or the A um, to set me up to play the B and the C correctly. Ready? Do, do the third line from the bottom one more time. I'll do it again because I did stop. One more time. Ready? it out if you don't, okay? Remember, you're going to put the right hand down on the second. I, I'm sorry, I, had, I did have to stop there, but um, you got it. Let's do it one more time. Ready? I'm doing that. It's, it's, so you want to work it out slowly, like I'm doing it at a pretty slow tempo to get that down, and then the notes come out easier, and then you can work on the speed, okay? So, you're going to want to practice the song slowly and break up the parts that you think you need to work on, like the crossing over the break section. Um, most of the song is probably pretty straightforward if you're um, looking at it. Um, it's a, tip, a, solo, uh, a great solo for an advanced beginner. So, you're going to become a, definitely a better player when you're done um, preparing this song. You're going to be able to cross over that break with ease. All right, so keep practicing. If you have any questions, go to the contact page listed at the top of the website. Or if you're one of my students, come on down and you can ask me any question about the um, Minuet in G. All right, in the meantime, uh, rock on, keep practicing, and have a great day.